Hello there! Welcome to Storytime. My name is Lee and I am a children's librarian at the Community Library and um, I usually do story time at the library but we're still not doing that though we are open a little bit right now so if you need to go to the library you can do that but you need to wear a mask and you need to do social distancing so maybe we'll see you at the library but I'm still doing story time from my house from my office so welcome to another story time and this week we are going to be reading stories about smiles because smiles are just so important so I thought it would be interesting because like when you come to the library you have to have a mask so that so this is my mask so we think of smiles with our with our mouth so you can't see a smile but you can kind of tell if someone's smiling from their eyes their eyes smile too so tell me right now am I smiling or not smiling do I look like I'm smiling or not? So you can smile with your eyes too. It's kind of important. So keep those smiles going because people need smiles right now. So let's get started. And the first book that we are going to read is called Smile A Lot. It's written and illustrated by Nancy Carlson. And it is from Carol, Carol Rhonda Publishing. Life has all sorts of ups and downs. That's why you should always smile a lot. It's much easier than complaining. When mom makes oatmeal with prunes for breakfast, smile a lot and ask if you can help her make chocolate chip pancakes tomorrow. Then figure out what to do with your oatmeal. <laughs> Smile a lot. It helps you make friends. If you are the new kid in school, don't sit in a corner frowning. Smile a lot and you won't be alone for long. Smile a lot. It confuses the tough guys. When the tough guys are hop hogging the swings, play on the monkey bars and smile a lot. The tough guys will think you're having more fun than they are. Soon, you'll have the swings to yourself. <laughs> Smile a lot, it gets you through hard times. When you only get three words right on your spelling test, just smile a lot and no one will know you only got three words right. And when you show your test to your mom and dad, smile a lot and tell them you'll do better next time. Then study hard, and next time, you might get a perfect score. Smile a lot. It gives you lots of courage. When you have to go to the dentist for a checkup, smile a lot. You'll discover the dentist is really not so bad. You might even get a prize or two for your bravery. Smile a lot. It will help you reach your goals. When you have to run a whole mile at soccer practice, smile a lot. Smiling takes a lot less energy than moaning and groaning. Then you can run fast so that your coach just might start you at forward in the next game. When nighttime comes,
and you're starting to fall asleep, smile a lot because you had a pretty good day. And that's the end. I think that's true. I find that if I smile a lot, it seems to be contagious and then other people smile at me, which I think is really cool. So maybe next time you go out, smile at people and see how many people smile back. That's kind of a fun thing to do. All right, so our next book is called Smile by Lee Hodgkinson. So her name is Lee too, but I spell my name differently than this. This Lee spells her name L-E-I-G-H. I spell my name Lee, L-E-E. -E. But they both have the same sound and are Lee. Um, so this book is by Lee Hodgkinson and it is published by Bowser and Bray. Mom says I can't have any more cookies until dinner. And that includes crumbs and little broken pieces. By the way, I am definitely not sulking. I am not particularly chipper or chirpy either. Usually these things are me in a nutshell, but not today. This is because I just realized something terrible. I have lost something very, very important. What I've lost is my smile. I wish I could find it. If I had my smile, everything would be nice and normal indeed. Oh, you know something? Someone just arrived that makes me smile. Look, it's my kitty. There's cranberry. <laughs> she makes me smile. She likes to sit on my lap. Oh, do you see your tail? <laughs> see, I love to smile. Smiling is one of my favorite hobbies. Smiling makes me feel sunshiny and as fresh as a daisy, whatever the weather. My dad says I should try to remember where I last saw it. And I think, ridiculous, if I knew that, then it wouldn't be lost, would it? Dad says, I will just have to look for it. But looking for things is so boring. If I was a multi-eyed alien, finding lost things would be super speedy. I'm not a multi-eyed alien though. It's just me. Get her down there. Maybe my smile has fallen under my bed. So I look, but it isn't there. Even though everything else seems to be, look at all that stuff under her bed. Perhaps I dropped it on the floor. If there is a floor under all this stuff, I don't think I have ever seen it. It could be an ocean made of wibbly wobbly jello for all I know. I suppose I had better clean up. This is highly unusual, but I am desperate. <laughs> is your floor made of jello? I don't think mine is. <laughs> no smiles to report here. Only one unhiggly piggly bedroom and no jello. But what if I didn't lose my smile? What if somebody took it? Well, I don't think it was glitter gills. Cheer up, glitter gills. Maybe a sprinkle of fishy flakes will do the trick. Glitter gills is not smiling. <laughs> Aha! Maybe the twins took it. They ask me what I'm up to. So I tell them and they just giggle. However, I don't think they're to blame this time as their smiles are much bigger than mine and much more annoying.
My smile is exactly the right shape and size just for me. It simply wouldn't suit anybody else. So if it isn't in my bedroom and it hasn't been stolen, it must be lost in the big wide world. But it will take ages to look there. Maybe I'll quickly check the rest of the house first. Mom says that most lost things in this house can be found in the following places. One, the sofa. Two, pockets. Three, Mr. Honeycomb's basket. Oh look, one of dad's flip flops. I think this is the flop one. <laughs> look at Mr. Honeycomb. Well, seeing as I am here, I'll just have a quick game with Mr. Honeycomb. He is one smart cookie. Boy, he's a smart dog playing cards. Five games later, mom finds me and says that my spick and span room is a complete miracle. She also says that I am a sweet pea for feeding glitter gills and playing with Mr. Honeycomb. I think Mr. Honeycomb agrees. Oh, look, he's giving her kisses. <laughs> you found it, say the twins. And I say, found what? We knew it would turn up, say the twins. And I say, knew what would turn up. And they say, your smile. Oh, I had forgotten all about that. I was far too busy playing and having fun. Um, let me see. Smiling. <laughs> and look, here they are at the dinner table. And everybody's smiling. And that is the end. I'm glad she found her smile. That would be a terrible thing to lose. Bye, Cranberry. I guess she just wanted to hear that book because she just jumped down. All right, so the next book we're gonna read is called Taking a Bath with the Dog and Other Things That Make Me Happy by Scott Mention. And this book is also from Candlewick Press. I miss your smile today, sweet pea. What would make you happy? I don't know. What makes you happy? Taking a bath. What makes you happy? Counting. What makes you happy? Running around. What makes you happy? Shoes. Those are some crazy shoes. <laughs> what makes you happy? Playing with my hair. What makes you happy? Digging. What makes you happy? Stripes. What makes you happy? Sleeping upside down. What makes you happy? Smiling. Hmm. Sweet Pea, you're smiling. Did you find out what makes you happy? Yes. I'm happy when I tickle my baby brother, jump rope, bake cookies with faces, ride my bike, chew peas one at a time, make a wish, 
stay up late, paint on eggs, make faces, hold my breath underwater, stick finger puppets on my toes, sing, slurp spaghetti, look at my reflection, dance with my shadow, play dress up, sit in my dad's chair, blow bubbles, drink tea with grandma, play drums, pretend I'm a monster, swim at night, lick sprinkles off ice cream, and I'm happy when taking a bath with my dog. <laughs> that does look like fun. Mom, you're smiling. You must be happy too. And that's the end. That is true. You know what makes mom and dad happy or grown ups? Seeing the little people in their lives happy. That always makes me happy when my when my kids are happy and my husband makes me feel good. All right, so our final book today is called Because Amelia Smiled, and it is from Candlewick Press. This is a neat book because it's like a giant circle, and I think you'll see what I mean when, uh, when we read it. So here's the first page. Because Amelia smiled coming down the street. Mrs. Higgins smiled too. She thought of her grandson Lionel in Mexico and baked some cookies to send him. Because Mrs. Higgins baked cookies, Lionel ate one of the cookies. He decided to share the rest with his class. and teach them an English song about cookies. Because Lionel taught his class a song, one of his students, kickboxer Sensatia Gloppus, <laughs> decided to be a teacher too. She had her cousin record her in the plaza and put the video online. Look at her doing some crazy stuff. Zesta Crump and her ballet club in England saw the video and decided to add some new moves to their goodwill recital. In Israel, Coates Glubberman, age four, who was in the audience, decided he liked dancing after all. At bedtime, he danced his brother Ichabod to sleep. Because Kotz danced him to sleep, Ichabod slept all night through. In the apartment next door, Betty Marlinspike, glamorous rumba queen, got a great night's sleep. She woke up in a good mood and took the band to get their hair done. In Paris. The band felt so fancy, they gave a free show on the Pont Neuf. On the barge below, Gregor, the ex-clown, listened inside. Their love song, Con Corazon Intracto, reminded him of his old flame. 
the amazing Phyllis, who lived in Postiano, Italy. The next morning, he bought a bouquet to send to her with a note that said, Phyllis, after all these years, will you marry me? Phyllis was so happy, she threw roses from a high wire. She was caught on film by a TV crew that was doing a story on cats. Look at her dog up on the high wire with her. Back in New York, Lydia Frittata saw Phyllis on TV while making pizzas on Carmen Street. On the subway home, she began a scarf of roses for her niece, Pia Maria. She sat across from Pigeon Man Jones. He watched her and remembered his dear old grandma who loved to knit. When he got back to his rooftop and let his pigeons out, he wondered if maybe somehow, wherever Grandma was, she could see them. Because Pigeon Man Jones let his birds out, Amelia saw them. And she smiled. That's the end. Boy, Amelia's smile traveled all around the world to all those people and made good things happen in their lives. Smiles are pretty powerful and good. So I hope you go out today and every day and I hope you smile. Sometimes you don't feel like smiling and that's okay too, but I hope every day you do feel like smiling at least a couple times. So share your beautiful smile and tune into the next video because we're going to have a craft about smiling. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you soon, I hope. Goodbye.